get it because this is what God wants from us. He wants us to be a spirit-led church, a spirit-led church. Romans 8, verse 14 to 17. So, and here's the question. Are you led by God's spirit? Are you led by God's spirit? They which are led by the spirit of God are called the sons of God. To be led of the spirit means that you are following him. He cannot lead you if you don't follow. So Romans 8 and verse 14, the 17 King James Version says this, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. He said, when you are led or when you follow God's spirit, you are considered God's son. So the opposite of that means if you are not led by the spirit, then how can you be a son of God? For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but this, but you ever see the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The first aspect of being a spirit-led church is to be a person or individual who is led by the spirit of God. So the first question then is, how do I know if I'm led by the spirit? I uh, will answer that question here using the scripture. The first prerequisite is you must is that you must believe in Jesus as the Son of God. Belief or to believe does not mean that you are meant that you mentally agree that Jesus is the Son of God. Furthermore, it means that you must react to Him being the Son of God. How do we react to Him being the Son of God? In other words, your life's devotion and obedience to His Word and His lived example is the true definition of believing in Jesus. Can I say that again? It means that you must react, that we must react to him being the son of God. In other words, our life's devotion and obedience to his word and his lived example is the true definition of believing in Jesus. So notice, I just said here, how do we know uh, what are the prerequisites of being led by the spirit? First, you got to believe in Jesus. So, King James Version uh, of John, the first chapter, the 12th verse says, but as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believed on his name, even to them that believe on his name, when you believe on his name in the definition of believing, I just read it to you, which means to react to him as the son of God, then he gives you the power to become a son of God. So listen to what the Amplified Version says. He said, but to as many as did receive and welcome him, he gave the right or the authority, the privilege to become children of God. That is those who believe or adhere to or trust or rely on his name. Those are the ones he has given the power to become the sons of God. Second prerequisite is to be filled with the spirit. John 20 and verse 22 says this. And when he had said this, he breathe on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And I'll go ahead and break it down just a little bit that Jesus, before he was taken up into heaven, he breathed on the 12 disciples or the 11 disciples at that time. He breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Now, and that was the birth into the new life as a, as a believer. So, and, and that, that is a parallel to what God did in the beginning with Adam. The Bible says that God breathed into Adam and Adam became a living soul. Adam was a natural man, but this is the spiritual side of it. Jesus is beginning the new life. So he breathed into them and now how they are filled with his spirit. When you are saved, according to Romans 10, verse 9 and 10, the spirit of God indwells the believer. Then the spirit begins the task of renewing you and conforming you into the image of Christ. This renewal is not a one-time event. As we cooperate with him, the spirit, we will, he will work with us and on us until the day we are taken from this earth. Watch this now. I'm going to go. I'm, I got to say this part again. This renewal is not a one time event as we cooperate with him. He is not going. The spirit of God is not going to force himself on you. You and I must cooperate with him and allow him to conform us into the image of Christ. As we cooperate with him, the spirit, he will work with us and on us until we leave this earth. 
Listen to this right here. Believers have the indwelling spirit of Christ, the comforter who proceeds from the Father. You see the scripture on your on your screen, I'm not going to read the scripture. So the Holy Spirit assists us in prayer. He intercedes for God's people according to the will of God. He also leads us into righteousness. He produces his fruit in us to those who are yielded to him. Believers, us, we Christians are to submit to the will of God and walk in the spirit. Here's another aspect of this truth. To be filled with the spirit of God isn't a one-time event either. Now, we must act we must ask to constantly be filled with the spirit. If you're not I want to get ahead of myself, but if you're not asking God to fill you with his spirit then, then how are we to walk and continue to allow him to uh to, to regenerate us or to renew us. Watch this now. Luke 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 11 and verse 13. If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who do what? Ask him. Ask him. Listen, look at the 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 uh, the parallel that he's drawn here in this one in this one verse of scripture. He said, "If we who are evil by nature, who are evil by nature, who do who does evil thing, but we know how to give good gifts (plural) to our children," he said, "If we know how to do that, give give uh, good give good gifts to our children. How much more would the Holy Spirit give the Holy Spirit?" How much more will God give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Here's the thing. Your children is not going to ask you for a gift one time. It's going When you give your child a gift, that child will ask you for a gift year after year after year. If they're yep. five years old, if they're 10 years old, if they're 20 and 30 and even 40 years old, they are going to continue to ask for gifts and favor. Watch this now. And he said, you know how to give good gifts. In other words, they are going to continually ask you for gifts. And he draws this comparison and says, how much more will the heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The word ask there is ask and keep on asking to be filled with his spirit. So that means that, that needs to be a part of our prayer. <laughs> people of God. It needs to be a part of our prayer. God, fill me with your spirit. Continue to fill me with your spirit because I want to be a spirit-led church. I don't know about y'all, but I want to be a spirit-led church and I want to be a spirit-led believer. So therefore, the, the, therefore, my prayer must be, Father, fill me with your spirit today. Can every, each and every day fill me with more and more of your spirit. And as you read the book of Acts, in from the book of Acts on, you are see throughout the entire Bible, just about the New Testament from the book of Acts on, they were filled and constantly filled with the Spirit. It wasn't a one-time deal. Okay, let's keep going here. So if, you, if you've never asked God to be filled with His Spirit, now is the time to do so. Why do I need to constantly ask God to fill me with His Spirit? Because you are not completely like Christ. Uh, you are not completely like Christ. I told you. I told you earlier. The task of the Holy, Holy Ghost is to make you more like Christ. And if we are not completely like Christ, that means we need to be con constantly working with Him, asking God to fill us. Watch this. Watch this. The more we are filled and yield ourselves to Him, the more we become like him. Thus the reason why you need to ask him continually. Walking in the spirit now. The Bible tells us to walk in the spirit. That, that word walk that means to conduct your life. Conduct your life, your lifestyle. It talks about your lifestyle. I say then, watch this Galatians 5. I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So now, tonight is the night that we should have had most of everybody on here that's in the church. So, but but anyway, we're going because we want to be a spirit led and spirit, number one, spirit filled church and spirit led church. Amen. So according to Romans 8, verse 13, he says also to walk after the spirit, to walk after the spirit or in the spirit means that we yield, we yield to his control. Listen, we follow his lead. 
and we allow him to ex exert his influence and power over us. To walk in the spirit is the opposite of resisting him or grieving him. And in Ephesians 4 and 30, you can go ahead and see, uh, look at that scripture and see what God is talking about right there. But he wants us to walk in the spirit or watch this walk with the spirit. And the Bible calls him the Ecclesi it calls him the Paracletus, the one who's called alongside to walk with us, to help us. The Bible, Jesus calls him the helper. He is the one who is helping us. He helps us from the inside out. But we as believers now, we must cooperate with the spirit of God. We must cooperate with the spirit of God. Okay. And a lot of, I'm going to say this right here. A lot of the things that we see, especially in the charismatic circle on TV, people jerking and jumping and shouting and howling and all that stuff. Those are not reactions of the Holy Spirit. The reaction of the Holy Spirit, I'm about to show you here in a minute. It's in Galatians chapter five. That is what this, the that is what the characteristic of the Spirit of God is. So not the I'm not saying that God won't slay you or knock you out or cause you to fall upon your knees. And there were some times that there then when 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 an angel or when the, when the presence of God showed up in the Bible, put, people fell on their faces. I get that part. But howling at the moon and all so forth and all this crazy stuff that you see, like I said, especially in charismatic circles, that's not the spirit of Christ. That's not the spirit of God. I don't believe it in one sense because you, you don't want to know why, but because I can't find an example of it in the word of God. Anyway, moving on. So those who walk in or after the spirit are united with him and are bearers, listen to this, bearers or producers of the fruit of the spirit. Thus, those who walk in the spirit walk in love. They live in love for God. <clears throat> And for their fellow man, they have love, agape love, unconditional love. Uh, those who walk in the spirit walk in joy. They exhibit gladness. No matter what they're going through, they have joy because they know the one who is able to bring them out. No matter what the circumstance is, they have joy about the circumstance because they know the one who is able to bring them out. They know, the Bible says this right here, that Jesus, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Why did he have joy? Because he knew knew that God was going to raise him from the dead. He knew that when God rose, raised him from the dead, that he would save the world of sin. So that, that gave him joy to endure the shame of the cross, to endure the cross and to despise the shame of it. Okay. So there's no way that those who are filled with the spirit of Christ to be walking around with their head down. You may be sad sometimes. You may be disappointed sometimes, but deep down on the inside, the joy of the Lord is your strength. You have joy because God is the one who, and you know that God is the one who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. So that when you have joy, you have the word of God on the inside of you. When you have joy, you know that God's not will never leave you nor forsake you. And that causes the believer to have joy. Now watch this. Right? Those who walk in the spirit walk in peace. Their lives are not defined by worry or anxiety. Because you know what? You know what? A, a person who really has peace, you know what they say? I leave it in the hands of God. When I leave it in the hands of God, I know everything's going to be all right. I'm not going to, my, my, my little finite mind is not strong enough to try to figure it out. So I just give it to the one who had everything already figured out. Listen to right here. They walk in patience because they, they, they don't lose their temper. They, are, they take their time with people. They understand what it takes to walk through things. So they are patient with other people. Those who walk in the spirit walk in kindness. They, they show concern for the needs of others. Those who walk in the spirit walk in goodness. Their actions reflect virtue and holiness. Those who walk in the spirit walk in faithfulness. They are steadfast in their trust of God and his word. They are faithful. You can count on them. They are there when you need them. They are there because, not because they, they're trying to impress man, but they are there because they, they 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 love God and they are faithful to him. Watch this now. Those who walk in the spirit are gentle. Those who walk in the spirit, I have no idea who's calling me, <laughs> but I have to call you back. All right, those who walk in, forgive me, y'all. Those who walk in, watch this, have self-control. 
they display moderation, constraint, and the ability to say no to the flesh. They can say no to temptation. They have self-control. Okay, listen, in order to get a better understanding of this truth, we need to grasp the contrast of what it means to walk in or out of the spirit. The contrast of it now, to not walk after the spirit is to walk in the flesh. Galatians gives us a perfect example of what a fleshly person is, a person who walks in the flesh. Listen, it speaks of the works of the flesh saying they are evident sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, division, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and these and, and things like these. He calls them the works of the flesh. Then what's what Paul does here? Paul then warns that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. The works of the flesh are the things that human beings naturally tend toward, and they are contrary to God's design for us. Those who pursue lifestyles characterized by immorality, anger, divisiveness, drunkenness, etc., are given evidence that they are not saved. So people who practice this type of stuff, who practice the works of the flesh, you cannot be saved because if you're practicing it, knowing what the word of God says as it relates to producing the fruit of the spirit. Okay. So when the Bible speaks of the flesh, it is often referring to our natural sin tendencies. We are born with a sin nature. Can I tell you this right here? Let me stop in the pause and take a, take a quick break and tell you this right here, that God does not dwell in an unclean temple. In other words, if you and I are conducting ourselves in, 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 in the sins of the flesh, God does not dwell there. I don't know about you, but I want him to dwell here because I need him and not me. Man cannot save me, deliver me, set me free, give me a word and, and, and order my steps. I need God to do it. And in, 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 in that sense, that means that I need to live my life according to the word of God, the will of God, so that I can be in fellowship with God. If I trust in him and, 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 and put, put my trust in him, then I need him. I need to live my life according to how. How Christ lived. I'm not perfect. I'll never be perfect while I'm here on earth, but I must allow the Holy Ghost to work in me and work it out through me. And then God said, I can use you because you are allowing. No, I'm not perfect. No one's perfect, but he still, when, you, when, when we have, when we have the, um, uh, the drive and the desire to live for Christ, he can use you on a greater level. So watch this now. So we're all born with a sin nature. Our natural tendency is to please ourselves in any way we see fit. That is the truth. We can be trained to behave in more social acceptable ways and even find enjoyment in being kind to others. However, without the power of God, we remain self-centered. That is absolutely true. We do what we do, even good things, because we receive some selfish payoff. Anything not done from faith or love for God, any deed not empowered by the Holy Spirit is a work of the flesh. A believer who is led by the Spirit of God is a person who produces the character of Christ, uh -huh, the, the character of the Spirit of Christ, as mentioned in Galatians 5. Another aspect of this truth is not only each individual believer is to be filled with the Spirit, but we as a church are to be filled with the Spirit of Christ. The individual believer produces the character of Christ, and the corporate believer produces the character of Christ. We as the church produces the character of Christ. I don't know about you, but on Sunday morning when we have fellowship, when we have church, I want God to show up. And so if God's going to show up in the book of Acts chapter 2, if he shows up, when 
when he shows up when we are on one accord. The Bible says that they were on one accord in one place at the time of prayer. They were praying up in the upper room and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. You know the scripture. God shows up. The spirit of God shows up when we are on one accord. When we are on one accord. When we are walking by faith. When we are walking, being led by the spirit of Christ. And that's what I desire. I desire to be to be uh to have the spirit of God uh show up on the scene when we are worshiping and praying. Listen to this scripture, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12 to 27, but I'm not gonna read all that. For as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that one body being many or one body, so so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we baptized in the one body. The spirit of God brings us together into one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, we all have been made to drink into that one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. Verse 27, now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. God we are to be filled uh, individually. We are to be filled corporately. We are one body and we are joined by one spirit. God, fill this house with your spirit. Fill these your people with your spirit. Last slide. Okay. Last and certainly not least, we ought to be filled with the spirit of God so that we can walk in power and be witnesses for Christ. Acts 1 and 8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses telling people about my ev about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. The Amplified Version says this, but you will receive power and ability when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses to tell people about me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the ends of the earth. In a nutshell, watch this. In order for us to be a spirit-led church, we must first be a spirit-led individual. In order for us to be a spirit-led church, you must first be a spirit-led individual. In order to be a spirit-led individual, you must acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Then he says, when we acknowledge and believe that he's the Son of God, he gives us the power, the authority to become the sons of God. Like you cannot be a son of God or a child of God if you don't acknowledge or believe in the Son of God. I wish I had a witness in here. When you as an individual to get saved, the spirit of Christ begins to live within you. When you get saved, when you acknowledge Jesus, when you believe in your heart, according to Romans 10, verse 9 and 10, then his spirit become, begins to live in you. But that's not the end of it. As we walk throughout our Christian life, Christian life we are to act God continually to be filled with his spirit. And as we are filled with his spirit, the first thing he does is begin to change our character to reflect that, that of Christ. So the question then becomes, or the statement is, am I like Christ? Can I see a difference from when I first got saved to now? If I've been saved five years, if I've been saved five months, do I see a change in me from when I first got saved to where I am now. If I'm still doing the same thing I did when, uh, before I got saved, then the question then, are you really saved? Because when the spirit of God comes in you and we cooperate with him, he begins to change us. He begins to change us and renew us. That, that's what the, the word regeneration means, to renew us. And the Bible talks about us being re renewed. Paul, Paul said this in Galatians 2. He said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ live in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So Christ lives in me. So the question then, as I as I examine my life, as I take inventory of my life, and I and and as, as I compare my life with the Word of God, 
is, can I safely say and confidently say that Christ is living in me? All right. Uh, so throughout our Christian lives, we are to ask God continue to be filled. And as we are filled with the spirit, the first thing he does is begin to change our character to reflect the, that of Christ. And then he mentions in Acts chapter one, verse eight, he gives us power. And that power is to be a witness, not only to be a witness to speak, but to be a witness to live in our everyday life. That means your life is a witness. So if you, even if you don't say nothing, people should be able to look at your life and see Christ in you. Good God, our mercy. God's desire for his church is to be spirit led. If the church of God is spirit led, then we must be a people who follow him and take all of our commands from him. The mark of a church that has no power is a church that is led by man and not by the spirit of God. Father God, thank you for the word of God tonight. I appreciate you for that. We acknowledge the Holy Spirit, your spirit that you have placed here with us and for us. We acknowledge him as Lord and God. We acknowledge him as our leader. We acknowledge you, oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we ask that you lead us and guide us into all truth. We ask that you empower us to be a witness for you. We ask that you empower us to do miraculous things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We ask you, oh God, to move among your people in the name of Jesus. You said where there are two or three gathered in your name, there you are in the midst. So I thank you tonight, God, that you are spark. A, a, a hunger and thirst on the inside of your people. Draw them closer to you. This is my prayer. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen.